<clears throat> a very good afternoon to all the students present in the session. I'm Dr. Tanya Bose. I welcome you to the third session of Complex Variables. I hope I'm audible and my slides are also visible to all of you. Okay, fine. Okay, so solutions to yesterday's exercises that I gave you at the end of the session. So let's look at the first exercise. f of z equal to z square plus z is analytic for all z. So yesterday we saw what is the definition of analytic functions and how do we check mathematically that a given function is analytic or not with the help of Cauchy-Riemann equations. So now in this question we have to see that whether this polynomial is analytic or not. I guess you have done this question. So let's look at the solution. So you can see that we are first of all to satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations. I need the real part and the imaginary part of the function. So in place of z, we are substituting it as x plus eta y and doing simple calculations and solving this, we can separate the real part and the imaginary part. So on comparing, we get u is x squared minus y squared plus x and v is 2xy plus y. So we check out the first order partial derivatives of u and v to check the Cauchy-Riemann equations and we get that curl u by curl x is 2x plus 1, curl u by curl y is minus 2y, curl v by curl x is 2y, and curl v by curl y is 2x plus 1. So very clearly you can see that curl u by curl x is equal to curl v by curl y, and curl u by curl y is equal to minus curl v by curl x, right? And if you remember the necessary and sufficient conditions that we did yesterday, the first condition was that the partial derivative, they should be continuous, right? So you can see that the partial derivatives, they are polynomial functions. So yesterday we saw that all polynomial functions, they are always continuous, are continuous and hence, and the second condition, the Cauchy-Riemann equations are also satisfied. So the function is analytic, right? So I think you have done this question, right? Okay, fine. Okay. We move on to the second question. The second question was, I gave you an MCQ for the function f of z as x upon x squared plus y squared minus eta y upon x squared plus y squared. You have to mark the correct option out of these four. So let's see what is the correct option for this. So let us look at the solution. So you can see that already the real part and the imaginary part has been given to you. U is x upon x squared plus y squared and V is minus y upon x squared plus y squared. So when you calculate the partial derivatives, curl u by curl x and curl v by curl y, you will apply the quotient rule here. And when you calculate curl u by curl x and curl v by curl y, you will get y squared minus x squared upon x squared plus y squared whole squared. So you can see that the first Cauchy-Riemann equations are satisfied, right? And then we can calculate the second one that is curl u by curl y and curl v by curl x. And you will see that you are getting curl u by curl y as minus 2xy upon x squared plus y squared. And it will be same as minus curl v by curl x. I have left the calculations for you. So they are just the hints. So you will see that the second Cauchy-Riemann equations are also satisfied, right? But then you can see one more thing in this. 
these cauchy riemann equations are only satisfied if the denominator term is not becoming zero isn't it if the denominator becomes equal to zero it will not be a defined term right so yesterday we did the definition of analytic function that the function should be defined also right so these cauchy riemann equations are satisfied only if x square plus y square is not equal to zero right so let's see what is the conclusion then for this question so we can see that the cauchy riemann equations are satisfied except the point x square plus y square equal to zero and which point will correspond to x square plus y square equal to zero the only point that will be satisfied is x and y when both are zero that means the point origin and 0 comma 0 is defined by the point z equal to 0 that means i can say that f is analytic in any domain not containing the point z equal to 0 so yesterday if you remember the diagram i showed you for the domain a domain consists of infinite points and for a function to be analytic in the entire domain it should be analytic at all the points so in this question we get that the function is analytic everywhere except the point z equal to 0 because at z equal to 0 the derivatives are not defined right so then what will be the answer to the mcq option is fz analytic everywhere this cannot be the answer is fz nowhere analytic no it is at some points it is analytic right so this cannot be the correct option is fz analytic in the domain except at z equal to 0? Yes. So this is, I think, the correct option, right? So C becomes your correct option that fz is analytic in the domain except at z equal to 0, right? I think this point is clear to everybody. Okay. Fine. Now, we move on to the next question, the next MCQ I gave. If Fz is xy plus eta y, then you have to mark the correct option, right? So let's work out the solution for this MCQ. So we have the solution as Fz is xy plus eta y, then you can clearly see that fz is composed of x, y, and y in the real and the imaginary terms. So they are both continuous functions. So I can check very easily. I've already told how to check for continuity. So you can check continuity at a general point, z0. And since it is a polynomial function, so you will 100% get the answer as continuous, right? So you can check this. And then let's see what are the cauchy riemann equations are they satisfied or not so if i compare it with u plus eta v i will get u is equal to x y and i will get v is equal to y so when i calculate curl u by curl x we get y when i calculate curl u by curl y i get x curl v by curl x is zero and curl v by curl y is one so very clearly you can see that is curl u by curl x equal to curl v by curl y? No, they are not equal, right? Likewise, curl u by curl y is not equal to minus curl v by curl x. So both the Cauchy Riemann equations are not satisfied. So what is the conclusion then for this question? The function is continuous, but it is not analytic. So which option will you mark in your MCQ? It should be this third option that is fz is continuous everywhere but not analytic right so i think the ones who have solved this question they have got their answers correct right okay so there is a question that z equal to zero i should repeat again okay i'll just go back to the previous slide okay let's look at this point So this was the question, right? I think you can calculate the derivatives and you can check out your Cauchy Riemann equations. They are satisfied. But one point that you should keep in mind when you calculate the derivatives, 
what is the answer you are getting? Both the derivatives, they are becoming equal to y squared minus x squared upon x squared plus y squared whole squared, right? This term is valid or it is defined only if x squared plus y squared is not becoming zero, isn't it? If this term, if the denominator term for any rational number becomes equal to zero, is that term defined? No. So whenever you are calculating the derivatives, the derivative should be defined at all the points of the domain, right? So in this particular question, the denominator term cannot be zero. So if it is becoming zero, only at that point, that is a problem point. Rest of the points, it will be defined. You put, you give x and y any values, it will not be zero unless and until you give both x and y equal to zero. So we can say that the Cauchy-Riemann equations are satisfied except at the point z equal to zero. So your function becomes analytic everywhere in the domain except the point z equal to zero. So if you just remove that point from, the, from your domain, from your region, the function will be analytic everywhere, right? So I think now it is clear, okay. So this was all with the yesterday's problems. Now we move on with today's presentation. So today I will focus on two things, that is properties of analytic function and Millen-Thompson method, right? So we did the definition of analytic function and we have done many questions, how to check that a given function is analytic or not. Now today we will study its properties. They are very, very important from the examination point of view, as well as the Milner-Thompson method, right? So let's start with the first section of my today's presentation, properties of analytic function. So the first thing that we are going to study today is harmonic functions. So make a point, all of you should carry a notebook and a pen along with you so that you jot down the important points because we will be practicing many questions today. So the terminologies that I will be discussing in this particular slide, it should be clear to everybody, right? Otherwise you won't follow the MCQs that I will put up in the next questions, right? Okay, so let's look at the definition. If Fz is equal to U plus I to V is analytic in a domain D, then U and V both have continuous second order partial derivatives in D and they satisfy Laplace equation. Now, what is Laplace equation? Laplace equation means that if U is satisfying Laplace equation, we will write it as del square U is equal to zero. What is the meaning of del square U equal to zero? You can see that the function U, it is dependent on the variables X and Y. So, del square u equal to zero means you will take the partial, the second partial variables, you will add them and the sum should always be equal to zero. That means del square u upon del x squared plus del square u upon del y squared should be equal to zero. Similarly, we are also saying that we will also satisfy the Laplace equation. That means del square v should also be equal to zero. So we get del square v by del x squared plus del square v by del y squared will be equal to zero. That means we are saying that, I'm again repeating, that if f it is equal to u plus i to v and this function is analytic, it is given to you that the function is analytic in the domain D, then the real part and the imaginary part of this analytic function will always have continuous second order partial derivatives and it will always satisfy the Laplace equation. So the Laplace equation is del square u by del x square del plus del square u by del y square is equal to zero and del square v by del x square plus del square v by del y square is also equal to zero. So both u and v, they will satisfy the Laplace equation, right? Now let's see what is the next thing. So a function f, which possesses continuous second order partial derivatives and satisfy Laplace equation is called harmonic function. So what is the definition of harmonic function or when do we say that a function is harmonic? If a function, it possesses second order, continuous second order partial derivative, and it also satisfies the Laplace equation, then we say that the function is a harmonic function, right? 
So please make a note that what are harmonic functions? It should possess continuous second order partial derivatives and it should satisfy the Laplace equation, right? Okay. Next. If f z is u plus i to v is analytic function, then u and v are both harmonic functions, right? We have just seen above that if f was analytic, then u and v, they both satisfy the Laplace equation. So if I go by the definition of harmonic function, I can say that if my function f is an analytic function, then the real part and the imaginary part of that function will always have second order partial derivatives and they will always satisfy the Laplace equation. And hence, I can always say that the real part and the imaginary part of the function are called harmonic functions, right? So this is the important property of analytic function that if your function is analytic, then u and v will always be harmonic. And what is the meaning of harmonic? That it will have continuous second order partial derivatives and it will satisfy the Laplace equation, right? Now, let's look at the next one. If fz is u plus i to v is analytic function, then u and v are harmonic conjugate functions of each other. Now, what are conjugate functions? Like if I say that we have a complex variable z, then its conjugate is z conjugate, right? It is x minus i to y. Likewise, when u and v, if f is your analytic function, then it is given a terminology that u is called the harmonic conjugate of v and v is called the harmonic conjugate of u. That means if any one of the function is known to you, you can calculate the other function. That means if u is known to you, you can calculate v. If v is known to you, then you can calculate u. That is why we call it harmonic conjugate. u and v are both harmonic conjugates of each other. Right? Okay. Any doubts in this particular slide? Harmonic functions. What are harmonic functions? And what are harmonic conjugate functions? Any doubts in this particular slide? Okay. Conjugate is just a terminology used. U and V are both harmonic functions, but we will say that U is harmonic conjugate of V and V is harmonic conjugate of U. Why are we saying this? Because in the next few slides, you will see that in some questions, you will be given the data for u only. In the question, u will be provided to you, the real part, right? And they will ask you, find the imaginary part of the function. So that is why they are termed as conjugate functions. If one is known to you, you can calculate the other function. Because if I say that variable z is known to you, what will be its conjugate? You will simply replace eta with minus eta, right? But here we don't replace eta with minus eta. What we will do, there is a technique I will be discussing in the next slides. It's just a terminology given that U will be called the harmonic conjugate of V and V will be called the harmonic conjugate of U, right? And harmonic functions are those functions which will possess continuous second order partial derivatives and they will satisfy the Laplace equation, right? So let's go to the next slide and it will become more clear with the help of examples, right? Okay. Then we have orthogonal systems. What are orthogonal systems? Every analytic function fz equal to u plus i to v defines two families of curves. One is u equal to c1 and the other one is v equal to c2. This forms an orthogonal system. What do you understand by orthogonal system? Let us look at the graph. You can see that there are two curves plotted in this graph. This is the graph for the red curve is for u equal to c1 and the green curve is for v equal to c2. If I draw tangents along these two curves, I can see that the tangent, they intersect at right angles, right? So this is what the property says, that if your function is an analytic function, then these two curves, u and v, they will always form an orthogonal system. If you plot them, they will always intersect at right angles. So this is the second property of analytic functions, right? So this can come as an MCQ question, right? 
Okay. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the first example. Let u is equal to 2 plus 3x minus y plus x squared minus y squared minus 4xy. Show that u is harmonic, right? Let's recall what was the definition of harmonic function. It should have continuous second order partial derivatives. And secondly, it should satisfy the Laplace equation. And what was the Laplace equation? Del squared u by del x squared plus del squared u by del y squared should be equal to zero, right? So let's see what is the solution all about. So let's first calculate the first order partial derivatives. So we have del u by del x, so you can calculate quickly. What is del u by del x? 3 plus 2x minus 4y. And what is del u by del y? It is minus 1 minus 2y minus 4x, right? Okay. Let's calculate the second order partial derivative. Now, what is del squared u by del x squared? It is simply 2 from this expression. And what is del squared u by del y squared? It is minus 2. So we get there. Now, when we add these two terms, what is my answer? We get del squared u by del x squared plus del squared u by del y squared becomes equal to 0. So does this show that u is harmonic? Yes. Why? Because it is satisfying the Laplace equation. Is it having continuous second order partial derivative? The second order partial derivatives are 2 and minus 2. Yesterday I told you that constant functions are always continuous. So the second order partial derivatives are also continuous. The Laplace equation is also satisfied. And hence, the function u is a harmonic function. Clear? Any doubts in this question? Okay, fine. We move on to the second part of the same question. The second part says, determine the harmonic conjugate V satisfying V00 is equal to zero. So this is what I was talking about in the previous slide where I was explaining the definition of harmonic conjugate. In this particular question, what was given to you? harmonic conjugate, right? And one more condition is given to me that V0, 0 is equal to 0. So let us see where this condition will be used later on in the question. So let's see what is the technique that if one of the real part or the imaginary part is provided to you, how do we get the other part from the equation, right? So let's see how to work out. This question is very, very important from the examination point of view. So please pay attention. We have several questions today in my slides so that this point becomes very clear to you, right? So all of you, please be attentive and also side by side, jot down all the steps so that you do it on your own while I'm explaining the question. See the solution. To calculate the other part, to calculate V, so u was given, we have to calculate v. We will take the help of Cauchy-Riemann equations. I told you yesterday that Cauchy-Riemann equations play a very, very important role. So every now and then, we will be using these Cauchy-Riemann equations whenever your function is analytic, right? Okay, so we have done two Cauchy-Riemann equations. Curl u by curl x is equal to curl v by curl y. And curl v by curl x is equal to minus curl u by curl y, right? Now, how to use them? You were given that u is this expression in the question, right? Okay, so what we do, we first calculate, since in these Cauchy-Riemann equations, I don't know what is v, so I cannot calculate curl v by curl y and curl v by curl x. So whatever information I have, let me calculate those things. So from u, I can calculate curl u by curl x and I can calculate curl u by curl y. So that is what I'm doing. I'm calculating curl u by curl x. So I'm getting 3 plus 2x minus 4y and curl u by curl y becomes minus 1 minus 2y minus 4x. I think this step is clear to everybody. 
Okay. Now, what do we do after this? We obtain a harmonic conjugate with the help of the Cauchy Riemann equations, right? We take up the second Cauchy Riemann equation. You can take any one, it's your choice. The first use first. You can take any one of the equations, right? I have taken the second equation first. So I am using the second Cauchy Riemann equation that is curl B by curl X is equal to minus curl U by curl Y. And in the previous slide, we have just calculated the value of curl U by curl Y. I have quoted the value here. What was curl U by curl Y? It was minus 1, minus 2 by minus 4X. So I can say that curl B by curl X will be equal to negative of this. So when I take negative sign here, all the terms become positive. So we get curl V by curl X is equal to 1 plus 2Y plus 4X. Now tell me that if I know the value of curl V by curl X, how will I calculate V? I have partial derivative of V with respect to X. How will I calculate V then? How will I calculate this V? Just think about it. Yes. Of course, we will integrate, right? Very good, we will integrate, right? Now, how to integrate it? There are two variables, right? One is x and the other one is y. V is dependent both on x and y, right? So when we have to integrate it, I will integrate V with respect to x. That means what about the variable y? Y will be kept constant, isn't it? So if I'm integrating with x, y will be kept constant right so let's integrate this expression with respect to x keeping y constant so let's look at the next step how to integrate it when we integrate with respect to x keeping y constant what we will get this part will become v this expression one we are integrating with respect to x so one will become x right 2y it was kept constant so we get 2y and we get x along with it. 4x will become 4x squared by 2. So 2 can be cancelled and we get 2x squared. And whenever we integrate, we get a constant, right? But what about the constant here? You kept y constant while you were integrating it. So your constant will come in terms of the variable y, right? When you earlier do it in real variables, when you integrate with respect to x, nothing is kept constant. So you get a numerical constant c over there, right? But here, the variable y is kept constant. So the constant will be a term in y. It will not be a numerical constant, right? So I think this step is clear to everybody. So this is the expression for v. But you can see in this expression, this term is not known to us. You have to calculate this term gy. Otherwise, if you get the value of gy, you have done. You are done with the question. You were supposed to calculate v and you are done with the question. But now still, you have to calculate the value of gy. So now how to calculate this value of gy? Let's go for that. Now, so I've already explained that gy is any function in y. So let's see how to get the value of gy. So we will again take the help of Cauchy Riemann equations. There were two Cauchy Riemann equations, right? And so far, you have just used the second one. That means the first one is still left, isn't it? So if the first one is still left, let us compute both these values. You have already calculated curl u by curl x in the first slide. And in the previous one, we have calculated the value of V. So from there, I can get the value of curl V by curl Y, and then I can equate them, right? So let's see. V was in the previous slide, X plus 2XY plus 2X squared plus GY. So when I calculate curl V by curl Y, what will I get? Derivative of V, partial derivative of V with respect to Y. I will get 2X from here. This term will become zero derivative of gy will become g dash y and it is equal to curl u by curl x u was provided to me in the question so curl u by curl x will become 3 plus 2x minus 4 right 
Now, when you equate them, what can you see? That 2x will get cancelled from both sides. So will you get the value of g dash y? So what is g dash y? g dash y is 3 minus 4y, right? If g dash y is 3 minus 4y, how would you calculate g y from here? You will integrate it. Now the function g only contains the variable y. There is no x present in this. So you will integrate it with respect to y. When you integrate this expression with respect to y, you will get g dash y will become g y. Integration of 3 will become 3 y. Integration of 4 y will become 4 y square by 2. That is 2 y square. And since no variable was kept constant here, so you will get a numerical constant c. Right? So in this step, you are getting the value of g y. Substitute this g y back into this expression. So will you get back the value of v from here? So what is v? v becomes equal to x plus 2xy plus 2x square plus 3y minus 2y square plus c. Now the last task is to calculate the value of the constant. If you remember the question, I had given you one value v0 0 is equal to 0. This condition was provided to you in the question. If this condition is not provided to you in the question, then this will be your final answer, right? But if this question is, it is provided in the, the condition is provided there in the question, what will you do? What is the meaning of this? That when x and y are becoming 0, the value of v is equal to 0. So put x and y equal to 0 and put v equal to 0. So what will you get? All these terms become equal to 0 when you put x and y equal to 0. So you are left with simply c and c becomes equal to 0. So if c is equal to 0, what is the expression left for v? v is x plus 2xy plus 2x squared plus 3y minus 2y squared. So you can see that you were only given u in the question. And how with the help of cauchy riemann equations, we used both the cauchy riemann equations one by one and how we calculated the other part of the analytic function. So the harmonic conjugate V has been calculated by using the cauchy riemann equations, right? Any doubts? Any doubts in this particular question? Any doubts? Okay, don't worry, we will have many questions further also like this. So let's just concentrate how the C became zero. If you just go back to the question statement, let me go back to the question statement and show you the condition there. It was given to you that you have to find out the harmonic conjugate V. coming in terms of the constant c. So I have to at the last step calculate the value of the c. So what am I doing? I am simply substituting x and y equal to 0 and I am putting this expression equal to 0 because v is equal to 0 given to us. So when you put x and y both equal to 0, this term becomes 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 0. So what is left? c is left. And what is the left hand side? Left hand side is also equal to z, 0. So your expression for c becomes equal to 0 from here, right? And once c becomes 0, so in the expression for v, you are left only with these five terms, right? I guess it is clear. Okay. Now, the third, next example. I, I told you that we will be doing many such examples today. So don't worry, even if you have not followed the last mm -hmm. one. I will do this. So again, the same steps are there. So you will catch, right, how we are doing it. So don't worry about them. Okay, let's see. Look at the same, the, I've just changed the question statement. Verify that u is equal to x squared minus y squared minus y is harmonic and find a harmonic conjugate function v of x, y. So I've changed u, the question remains same, right? So let's revise again. What was the harmonic function? It was that function which was satisfying the 
Laplace equation and which had continuous second order partial derivatives. So your first job is to calculate the partial derivatives. So let's calculate them. So you can see that if u is x squared minus y squared minus y, what is ux? I can use this notation. I think we have done this notation in PDE. So ux is equal to 2x. So what will be uxx? It will be equal to 2. Likewise, uy is minus 2y minus 1. So what will be uyy? It will be equal to minus 2. When you add them, what do you get? uxx plus uyy is equal to 0. You can also see that the second order partial derivatives, they are constant. So they are automatically continuous. And hence, I can term that u is a harmonic function, right? So this, I think, is very simple. You can do this, right? We move on to the second part of the question. That means we have to calculate the harmonic conjugate function b. Let's see how to calculate the harmonic conjugate function. So I told you that we will calculate the harmonic conjugate function with the help of Cauchy Riemann equations one by one. And there is no hard and fast rule that you have to pick which one. You can pick any of the two uh, Cauchy Riemann equations, right? You can do by any method. Let's see. So let's recall what were the Cauchy Riemann equations again. Curl u by curl x is curl b by curl y. Curl b by curl x is equal to minus curl u by curl y. And u was given to you as x squared minus y squared minus y. And so let's use the first Cauchy Riemann equations. ux is equal to b by, right? So ux is equal to b y. What is ux? u is given to me. So ux will be 2x. So b y becomes equal to 2x, right? Now, if you just concentrate on this part, b y is equal to 2x. b y means del b by del y. So if del b by del y is known to you, how will you calculate b? You will integrate it with respect to y, isn't it? But when you integrate it with respect to y, which variable will be kept constant now? We will keep x constant, right? In the last question, we first took up this Cauchy Riemann equation, right? So I'm telling you by both the things, you'll get the same answer. Now I'm picking up the first one, right? So it's your choice. Either you can pick this or you can pick this. There is no hard and fast rule which one you have to pick first, right? So if I take b y is equal to 2x, if I integrate it with respect to y, keeping x constant, what will I get? I'm integrating the first expression with respect to y. So I get, look at this term, when I integrate it with respect to y, I will get 2xy plus, which variable was kept constant here? The variable x was kept constant. So your constant term will be some function in x. And that function I have termed it as h, right? And let us see what is the second equation that I have marked. That is my second Cauchy Riemann equations. The second Cauchy Riemann equation says uy is equal to minus bx. So uy is equal to minus bx. I know what is uy. Uy can be calculated as minus 2y minus 1. So I have written the value here, right? And I have marked this as equation number 2. So right now I have just integrated the first equation with respect to y and the variable x was kept constant. So I'm getting a constant in terms of a function a constant function h of x. So this is my value of b, but it is containing hx. So I have to calculate what is this hx. So how to calculate this hx? Now this is my next job, right? So let's see how to calculate hx. So, so these are just the last slides. I just copied it here so that you refer, you can refer it to easily. So you can see that I have already used up the first Cauchy Riemann equation, so I cannot use it any longer. So now let us pick up the second one, right? So this was my last step. To pick the second Cauchy Riemann equation, I have to write the value of curl B by curl X. So what is curl B by curl X from this expression? It will be 2Y plus what will be the derivative of HX? It will be H dash X. So let's see. So Vx becomes 2y plus you can either write h dash x or you can write dh by dx. It's your choice, right? 
and it is equal to what minus u y. What is minus u y? If u y is equal to minus of two y plus one, so minus of u y will become two y plus one. So I have quoted the value here. So two y plus one is equal to two y plus d h by d x. So you can cancel out the two y from both the sides. So you are left with d h by d x is equal to one, right? Now, what is your next job? You have to calculate h. So, if d h by d x is one, how will you get the value of h? You will integrate this with respect to which variable? X. H contains only x. So, when you integrate d h by d x, what will you get? H is equal to integration of one will become x. And now, since no variable is left, so you will get a numerical constant c. So you can put back this value of h x in the last expression for v. So what is your v then? V becomes two x y plus x plus c, right? Now in this particular question, there was no condition given to you, right? Like it was given in the last question, but here no condition was given to you. So this will be your final answer. You will leave your answer here. But if some condition is given to you in the question, then you have to find out the value of the constant using those conditions, right? I hope it is clear. Now, let's move on to the third part of the question. You have to determine f z. So, in the starting in the first part, only u was provided to you. So you have checked that u is harmonic. In the second part of the question, you have calculated the harmonic conjugate that is v, and then in the third part, they are asking you the value of f z, right? So how to calculate f z? U you have calculated, v you have calculated. What is f z? F z is u plus eta v. So let's write down f z is u plus eta v. This was the value of u plus eta times this is the value of v, right? Now you have to do simple calculations. You have to just do certain manipulations so that you can combine them. And since the answer should be in terms of Z, so your final answer should be coming in terms of Z variable, not in terms of X and Y. So how we are doing those calculations, just look at the steps. X square I've kept constant, minus Y square I've kept constant. Then I have took this term, eta 2XY, and I'm writing it over here. Then the next term, I'm writing i times 2x, this term here. Then I'm writing minus y over here. And the last term is i times 2c, right? Now, this minus y square, it can be always written as i square y square, right? Rest of the terms have not been changed. They are same. And here, what is the manipulation I'm doing? I can write minus y as plus i square y here. And then I can take out eta common from this expression. When I take out eta common from this expression, I'm left with x plus eta y. And then we have eta c over here. Now, the first three terms which are grouped together, don't you think that this is x plus eta y whole square? This is becoming the formula for x plus eta y whole square. So this is my second term and this is my third term. And we very well know that the standard notation for x plus eta y is z. So this term can be written as z squared plus eta z plus eta c. So this becomes the value of fz in my equation. Right? Okay. So any doubts in this question? Yes. H is any function. You, it is just the name given to you. You can give any name. Any name can be given. Right? Hx is not the derivative of h. Hx is only denoting that h is dependent on the variable x. We have written the derivative as dh by dx. Right? Okay. Any other doubt? Okay. We will just revise this exercise two again so that you simply get to know what all is being done. I will quickly revise this example two. So this was your question example two. You have to verify that the function is, u function is harmonic 
and you have to find the harmonic conjugate b so you can see that i have checked the laplace equation that uxx plus uyy is equal to 0 so i have said that u is a harmonic function so i think there is no doubt in this step right now let us move to the harmonic conjugate part in the harmonic conjugate i told you that we will take the help of the cauchy riemann equations one by one so u was provided to you so i have calculated the first cauchy riemann equation that is ux is equal to vy and ux i can write it as 2x similarly i have marked this equation as 1 and i have taken up the second cauchy riemann equation uy is equal to minus vx and i can simply see that uy is minus 2y minus 1 so i have written it over here and this i have marked as uh, equation number 2 then if you just look at this equation vy is equal to 2x I have to calculate V in my question. So if VY is known to me, how will I calculate V? V is dependent on X and Y, both the variables. So if VY is known to me, I will calculate V by simply integrating V with respect to Y. But what about the variable X? The variable X will be kept constant. That means I'm partially integrating it with respect to Y, keeping the variable X constant. So when I integrate it, I will get V as 2XY plus since the variable X was kept constant, so the function that I'm getting as a constant is HX. You can name it by any function. It is not necessary that you have to name it with H. You can make it phi, G, anything you want, right? So I'm using the letter H here. So I'm naming the constant function as HX because the variable X was kept constant. So the next job is to calculate this hx value. So I have used the first Cauchy Riemann equation here. So to get hx, we will use up the second Cauchy Riemann equation, right? So we take up the second Cauchy Riemann equation. The second Cauchy Riemann equation was curl v by curl x is equal to minus curl u by curl y. So v was in the last step this. So if I calculate curl v by curl x, I will get 2y plus h dash x or dh by dx. So I'm writing the value over here. And minus of uy, uy is minus of 2y plus 1. So negative of uy will be simply 2y plus 1. So when I equate them, 2y will cancel from both sides and I get the value of dh by dx as 1. So simple calculus, if dh by dx is 1, how will you get the value of h? hx will be simply you will integrate it with respect to the variable x now. So you will get x and since no variable was kept constant, so you will get a numerical constant c over here. And you can plug in this value of hx in the last step, that is v. So your v expression will become 2xy plus x plus c, right? So you can see that in this particular question, no boundary condition was given to you. So you cannot find the value of the C. So this is your final answer to your harmonic conjugate B. And the third part of the question told you to calculate Fz. We know that Fz is equal to U plus Ita V. So we have already calculated U and V. U was already given to you in the question and V we have calculated. So I'm just putting the values here. And by simply simple calculations, I am converting this whole term in terms of z and fz becomes z squared plus ita z plus ita c right okay so i hope it is clear now okay i just told you that you cannot leave the answer in terms of hx you have to calculate hx right the answer can be only in terms of the constant term so hx is not a constant, it is containing the variable x. So you have to calculate the value of hx, fine? Okay, so we move ahead now. Let's look at the next exercise. Let u is equal to x cubed minus 3xy squared minus 4xy. Show that u is harmonic and determine the harmonic conjugate b b 0 0 is equal to 0. So you can see the same question I'm repeating so that the concept becomes clear to you all, right? 
so you are given that u is given to us you have to show that u is harmonic and then you have to find the harmonic conjugate function which satisfies this condition right so let's see the solution so i'm just quickly rushing this because you can simply i can you can calculate them del u by del x is this del u by del y is this so you can calculate the second order partial derivative and you can simply check that the laplace equation is satisfied that means del u by del, del square u by del x square plus del square u by del y square becomes equal to 0 and since they are 6x minus 6x they are polynomial functions so they are continuous also and hence we can say that u is a harmonic function right now let's see how to calculate the harmonic conjugate function v okay so again the same thing i am repeating again and again the cauchy riemann equations will be used so we use the cauchy riemann equation now i am using the second cauchy riemann equation right i am using it repeatedly different so that you come to know that we can use any one first there is no order that you have to use the first one first time and then the second one you can use any one of the cauchy riemann equation so now i am using the second one so the second Cauchy Riemann equation says curl B by curl X is equal to minus curl U by curl Y. What is curl U by curl Y? I have written the value of U here. So you can calculate what is curl U by curl Y. So it will be 6XY plus 4X. So it is carrying a negative sign. You will get negative sign. So since there is a negative sign here, so they will become positive, right? So if curl B by curl X is equal to 6XY plus 4X, how will you calculate v? We will integrate it with respect to x keeping y constant. So this concept should be very clear to you that with which variable we are integrating and which variable is being kept constant, right? So we are integrating now with respect to x and our variable y is constant, right? So that means when I will get the integration constant, that constant will be in terms of the variable y so let's see so when you integrate it with respect to x you will get 6x squared by 2y so it will become 3x squared y 4x will become 4x squared by 2 so it will become 2x squared and now you will get a constant function as gy so now this is not a constant it is containing a variable y in it so we have to calculate gy now, how to calculate this gy? This is my next job. So, let's see how to calculate this gy. So, we have used the second one. So, we are left still with the first Cauchy Riemann equation. So, with the help of the first Cauchy Riemann equation, we will calculate the value of gy. So, let's see how to calculate it. So, this first one says that curl v by curl y is equal to curl u by curl x. U I have written here. And V, we have already calculated in the last step. So, curl V by curl Y becomes 3X squared plus G dash Y. And curl U by curl X from easily see that it is 3X squared minus 3Y squared minus 4Y. So, when you equate them, 3X squared cancelled. And what is G dash Y left? G dash Y is minus 3Y squared minus 4Y. Now, if g dash y is known to you, how will you calculate gy? gy, you will simply integrate it with respect to y now and nothing is kept constant. So, gy will become minus 3y cube by 3. So, 3, 3 will get cancelled. You get minus y cube. Minus 4y, this will become minus 4y square by 2. So, you will get minus 2y square and you will get a numerical constant c. Now, in the question, you were also provided with the condition that B00 is equal to 0. That means you cannot leave the answer here. You have to still calculate the value of the constant term. So, if B00 is equal to 0, you can simply do the calculations and you will see that the value of the constant becomes equal to 0. So, what is the final value of V you get? V you will get as 3x squared y plus 2y squared, uh, sorry, 2x squared minus y cube minus 2y squared. You just put down the value of gy in the last expression for v. c is becoming 0, so gy is being added over here, right? So this becomes the value of v. So now I think I have made myself clear.
how to calculate the harmonic conjugate function, right? Okay. Now, this is an MCQ practice question. You can just note it down. We will discuss the answer tomorrow in the class. Find the harmonic conjugate V of mu 2x minus x cube plus 3xy squared. You can just jot down the options also. And till tomorrow, just work it out so that we can discuss it tomorrow, right? Okay, so I think you have jotted it down. And now we move on to the second section that is the Milne Thompson method. Now, what is the Milne Thompson method? You have seen in the second example that you were given the value of u. We had to calculate the harmonic conjugate function v, and then you were also told to calculate the value of the function fz, right? So now suppose you get a question in MCQ that U is given to you and they tell you that what will be FZ. Won't it be very lengthy to first calculate V and then to calculate FZ? So milne thompson method is a shortcut when either of U or V is given to you, you can directly calculate FZ from that given term, right? You don't have to calculate the other harmonic conjugate part, right? So what is this method now? Now, in this method, it is used to construct an analytic function when its real or imaginary components are known to us. So either of the component, either u or v is known to you, you do not have to calculate the, the other harmonic conjugate pair. Without calculating the other harmonic conjugate pair, you can directly calculate the value of the analytic function. Right? How it is done? See, look at the method. And note down the steps, right? So that it becomes clear to you in the next question when I show you. So first of all, suppose in your analytic function FZ, you are only given U. U is provided to you in the question. So what will be my step one? In step one, we will calculate curl U by curl X and curl U by curl Y. So this is my step number one. Please note it down that we will calculate the first step then, what is step number two? If you remember my yesterday's lecture, I told you how to calculate the value of f dash z. What was f dash z? It was curl u by curl x plus ita curl v by curl x. The first formula that I did yesterday, isn't it? Okay. Now in this, you can see that v is not known to you, isn't it? You are only given the value of u. So what we will do, I yesterday told you that with the help of Cauchy-Riemann equations, you can convert this curl B by curl X in terms of U variable. How to do it? Recall. What is curl B by curl X equal to? Curl B by curl X is equal to minus curl U by curl Y. So what we will do, we will write this term as curl U by curl X will be written as it is. And we will write curl B by curl X as minus curl U by curl Y. Right? So this is my step number two. So I will write f dash z equal to this term. I will put the value of curl u by curl x and I will put the value of curl u by curl y. Then next step will be, now the ex expression will be in terms of x and y. So what is my step number three? Wherever I will have x, I will substitute it as z. And wherever I will have y, I will substitute it as z. Right? So step number three is put x equal to z and put y equal to zero. After this, step number four. Now, when you convert x as z and y as zero, the entire function will be now in terms of z. So your last step is you integrate that function in terms of z and you will get the value of fz from there. Right? So I'm repeating these steps. 
Step number one, calculate the first order partial derivatives, curl u by curl x and curl u by curl y. In step number two, use the formula for f dash z as curl u by curl x minus eta curl u by curl y. Then substitute x as z and substitute y as zero. And then finally integrate that expression to get the value of the function, right? Okay, now let's look at the question. Look at this example. You are given u and the question says, find fz, right? So if you don't know this method, Milne-Thompson method, what will you do? You will first from u, you will calculate its harmonic conjugate pair that is v. And then you will write fz as u plus eta v. And then you will club those two terms. You will manipulate the, arrange the terms. And then you have to find the expression for fz. But see, Milne-Thompson method gives you a shortcut. So let's go through those steps and then let's imply them here. So first of all, I'm calculating curl u by curl x. This was step number one, if you remember. Curl u by curl x. Quickly see what is curl u by curl x. There are two functions, e to the power x and this bracketed term. So we will apply the product rule. First function as it is, the derivative of the second function, the second term. So e to the power x as it is. What is the derivative of this term? It will be simply cos y. This term will become zero. So this I have written here. Similarly, we will calculate curl u by curl y. What is curl u by curl y? Let's take the derivative of u with respect to y. So now e to the power x will be kept constant. Take the derivative of this expression, x into derivative of cos y is minus sine y. So I've written here. And here you have to apply the product rule. So derivative of sine y will be cos y. Then we will keep sine y constant. Derivative of y is one. So you get these three terms, right? The next step. In these derivatives, we will substitute x as z and y as zero. So when you substitute in the first derivative x equal to z and y equal to zero, step and see, will you get this expression? I'm just giving you two minutes. Hurry up. Put x equal to z and y equal to zero and see that will you get this term okay so i think you have got it now similarly we will put del u by del y we will put the same thing we will put x equal to z and y equal to zero and quickly check when you put x equal to z and y equal to zero do you get the expression whole thing equal to zero Okay, so I think you have all got zero here. Now, what is my next step? The next step is to calculate the value of f dash z. So just recall what was f dash z. f dash z was curl u by curl x minus eta curl u by curl y. So I will just plug in these two values in this expression. So my f dash z becomes e to the power z into z plus one minus eta into zero. This is my value of f dash z. And how will I get f z? I will integrate this expression with respect to z. So when I integrate this expression, this term will automatically become zero. So when I integrate this term, you have to integrate it by parts. I'm leaving the steps for you because it is very simple. So when you integrate it, you will get the answer as z into e to the power z plus a numerical constant right so you can see that in just four steps from the function u i have directly got the value of fz using the milne thompson method right so based on this method i'm giving you an exercise so the analytic function fz for which v is equal to xy now i told you that if u is given to you then how to proceed the same thing is when V is given to you, right? So if we go back to these steps of Milne-Thompson method, if U is given to you, these are the steps, right? If V is given to you, you have to do it by the same method. What will be the change? 
in place of curl u by curl x you will calculate curl v by curl x and curl v by curl y right in f dash z you are writing curl u by curl x plus eta curl v by curl x you were changing this term now but now if v is given to you this will be provided you have to change this term using the cauchy riemann equation and you will put it equal to curl v by curl y and you will follow the same two step right you can manipulate it on your own how to do it so based on this method you have to do this mcq questions so you can just note it down again i will tell you the answer tomorrow so for this analytic function fz if v is x into y then you have to calculate the value of the analytic function fz right so quickly note it down we are putting x equal to z and y equal to 0 so that we can convert it in terms of the variable z right so this is the shortcut that i am telling you so i hope you have just copied it down so with this we come to the end of this session so if you have any query you can just ask me i have 5 minutes more So if you have any doubts you can just ask me otherwise we'll close the session okay i'll just show the answers of the example sure just wait so in this u was given we are calculating the first derivative first and then as as the method i told you we have to put x equal to z and y equal to 0 in these derivatives so we will get these expressions and then using the formula for f dash z we will just plug in the values in this expression dash z and from f dash z how will you evaluate fz we will integrate it so on integrating by paths with respect to the variable z you will get the expression fz is z into e to the power z right so i guess it is clear the one who was asking me the doubt we are putting x equal to z and y equal to z because it is in the method given to us right okay so i'm closing the lecture so we will meet tomorrow so till then stay safe and still if you face any doubts you can please drop your mails to my mail address we are always welcome so i will just reply to your problems